Good morning, students. Now we move to the next film movement that is German Expressionism. So, Expressionism is actually an art movement which originated in Europe. So, German Expressionism is a part of that modernist movement which initially started with poetry and painting in Germany. And it was the movement where people sought to express what they felt, what they saw during the First World War. And this German Expressionism mainly spread around Germany and Northern European states. And it tried to portray the world subjectively through the eyes of the artist. And it distorted the reality. So distorting it radically and evo evoking emotions rather than portraying the physical reality. Dadaism is yet another art movement which, uh, which moved along these lines which moved against this conventional standard of beauty as you see in these pictures of this particular picture of Mona Lisa and there is this famous uh, painting the screen by Edward Munch so these are the uh, um, paintings which reflected this movement and German expressionist films were influenced by these art movements so, so these are some of the German Expressionist films. So basically it is between 1919 and 1924. We'll give you the videos of these particular films. Um, mainly Nosferatu. There is this Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, etc. And talking a little more detail about historical background. The German cinema was flourishing in the pre-war period with themes of modernity. But after World War I, the finances for this film started drying up. And there was no scope for making all those mega-scale narrator movies. They couldn't afford to make all those mega-scale narrator movies. Along with that, they had this mood of defeat after the war. There was this sense of decadence, the sense of disappointment, the sense of disillusionment creeped into this film industry as well. And thus this German Expressionism was a practical route, a practical um, way to make films and as well as it, is, it was a kind of a rebellion from their part too, a protest from their part too. And these are the filmmakers and films. So the traces of German Expressionism was seen in the first scene in this film, The Student of Prague, which came out in 1913, which was directed by Stalin Rai. And the first prominent film is The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, which came out in 1920 which is directed by Robert Wayne. So I'll give you the YouTube clip of this movie and this, uh, this uh, part from this movie itself explains the whole features of German Expressionism. And these are the other films in Osferatu. It is a symphony of horrors by uh, W.F. Murnau and it is inspired, by, inspired from Dracula. And there is this Hands of Orlac by Robert Wayne and Metropolis by Fritz Lang. So this, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, which was written by Hans Janowitz and Karl Mayer, was actually based on the writer's experiences as World War I soldiers and a distrust of authoritarian leadership. So these filmmakers deliberately distorted reality and tried to give their aim was to disorient the audience, to invoke a feeling of the time rather than a truthful or realistic depiction. So these films try to give the feel of that 
times of that disappointing times and nosferatu as it is said it is it is said that it is the grandfather of all vampire movies and it actually set the bar for every horror movie to come after so this w uh, f w manaus film is a thinly veiled adaptation of bram stoker's dracula and it holds up today as one of the most visually effective horror films and there is this nopolis which is a silent film by fritz lang it also uses expressionist imageries to give out a comment on technology consuming society so this film is deep in exaggerated imagery heightening which heightens the emotion and that actually drives the plot of this movie and we come to the characteristics mainly the themes of this movies of these films the film subject was all all surreal horror and about the unnatural acts of reality so there is this depiction of madness savagery and sexuality and there was nothing romantic in it there is nothing like a romantic depiction of of the reality you see in these movies so it was something like a uh, projection of characters subjective and often mad mind onto the screen and when you see the sets sets of the movies it is heavily stylized there is this candid camera shots it is also known as tilted camera shots and you know it is it also has another name dutch angles dutch angles and there is this use of distorted bodies and shapes and set designs were always this had this gothic style with widely non realistic and if you see that set it is geometrically absurd sets even the shadows were painted so these are the characteristics so mainly this expressionism used the son scene as you see all these heavily stylized camera candid camera shots and all those uh, geometrically absurd sets so they experimented more with german expressionist movies experimented more with mise-en scene and they always use this long shadow effects all these artificial sets with realistic details and these details in the sets bring forth the emotional that actually went to stir the audience mind and camera as it is said it is set in unexpected angles which try to give audience a different perception and it actually try uh, the main aim was to evoke mystery hallucinations and to give out extreme emotional stress so basically it was the projection of the external reality and you see these movies had slow pace when compared to other regular movies so these are the characteristics sets it was more or like abstract lacking depth it was more or like two dimensional so i will show you a youtube clip you will understand and acting it was very really stylized and it was consciously anti realistic and exaggerative in nature so at at some point they use extreme slow or or at at a point they used extremely fast movements so as i said earlier these expressionist movies films experimented with mise en scene 
at technology level there was no experiments there was not much editing coming there and limited camera movement so if you compare it with the earlier film movement uh, the other one uh, soviet and montage cinema there you see the experiment at the technology level that experiment happened with editing that is montage but here in german expressionist movies they never experiment with editing they ex try to experiment with mise en scene so that is the basic difference between soviet uh, cinema montage cinema and german expressionist films but this particular movie metropolis was an exception to this you see some kind of an experiments happening in that level too in metropolis and the impacts it ma made in world cinema it was financially successful across the globe in the beginning but later we see that by 1923 there was this political barrier and forced ban and this woman was banned as a degenerated art form but this german expressionist films moved to hollywood where this expressionism continued with the influence of hollywood glamour and culture and it is considered that the main reason for the fade away of expressionism was the gradual disinterest in this topic people lost interest in this art movement along with that these directors like fritz lang led germany fearing nazi and impacts other impacts include the attention its attention given to mise en scene got replicated in french poetic realism and the dark settings employed in german expressionist films was imitated by film noir a genre of film which came out in america and all those horror films drew inspiration from german expressionism so that's it girls about german expressionist movement so thank you girls have a nice day